What's poppin' everybody? We back in this bitch. Giving you guys a review for Married to Medicine Season 5, Episode 7, called Mama Drama. If you guys have not watched my previous video for the little bit of a letter, today's a special day. It's my birthday. Turn the big tree one. Just gonna be chilling out today, not doing nothing too fucking crazy. But nah, I'ma save all my energy for bringing in the new year and shit, cause you know, pretty sure we all can agree 2017, this year was a bitch. It was trying as fuck. Actually, shit, 2016 and 17 was trying for a motherfucker, but that's okay. That's okay, because I'm, I'm in Europe. I'm in a new motherfucking place. It's finna go the fuck down. Like I said, I've been, I've been having a decent time over here. Went to, you know, what is it called? It, um, it, yeah, Rosenberg. Uh, they have Christmas markets and whatnot. Y'all know I don't do Christmas, but they had they have this shit called Gluvine, which is a warm um wine. You know, because it's cold outside, so they want to get you warm and lick it up so you can buy more shit. And, you know, I got this nice, this nice little pretty, pretty mug and whatnot, you know, to commemorate. So, you know, and like I say, I mean, you can either keep the mug or give it back. You know, I'm definitely going to keep it as a little keepsake right here. This is this is real nice. Because uh, I only went to one this year. Next year, I'm probably going to hit up several different ones. And I'm only going for two reasons to give me a nice little cup. And to sip on that glue vine, because I, that, I I think that's my new shit, is glue vine. That's my, that's my shit right now. That's my shit. So. <laughs> but I'll say it now <clears throat> before I get into the video. Happy holidays to everyone. Uh, like I said, I know, like I said, we're all different. We're all diverse. And, <clears throat> you know, when people do the whole happy holidays, they don't mean it. But I truly do mean it. I just finished celebrating Hanukkah. Like, I threw down. You know, like, I didn't did funnel cake and shit. I did a uh, Sufgani Yolt, well, it's a jelly filled donut, but the fucking thing I had, it was cheap as fuck, so it wouldn't pipe the jelly into the donut, so it was just re regular powdered donuts, did deep fried apple pies, my mustard battered chicken fingers, I threw down, I threw, I threw down over here, I, so I celebrate my holiday, I love, I love Hanukkah's, eight days of deep fried food, how can you beat that, woo, beautiful, but <laughs> to everyone else, uh, a happy winter solstice if you celebrate that. Uh, like I said, I know some people, I'm in Europe, so Krampus, Christmas, Merry Christmas to, to all of those, um, happy uh, Kwanzaa, happy holidays, alright, so now that I got all that mushy shit out of the way, let's get into this video, so, um, <clears throat> it picks off where it left off, so now we have Quad calling Simone, and again, this is one of those where, if y'all don't, if y'all not catch, I don't know what y'all doing. But Quad and Simone respectively are doing the same thing with their husbands. The only thing is, why is this not folks? There it is. Quad is doing a better job of villainizing her husband. Simone isn't. I'm, I'm again. I'm just gonna call him Spade and Spade. <clears throat> now Simone says that men speak in different languages, which we do. We communicate very fucking differently. And she said, "Oh, and Simone asked her, do you feel that you've done everything?'" Her response is, I have done a lot. Okay. Calling bullshit, quad. I'm, I'm calling bullshit like a motherfucker. And if y'all didn't watch my last video, I didn't come right out and say how I fucking felt. Because, again, most of my scriber base is female. But some of y'all picked up on what the fuck I was saying. So, I'm going to leave it where it's at. So, over then we got Dr. Heavenly and Jewel, who is her spiritual advisor. So... Dr. Heavenly feels that people judge her more. And she was like, shit, sh like, should I keep professing Christ? And I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is, in general, when motherfuckers know that you are trying to do better, when they see that you're trying to change, whether it's you're trying to increase your spiritual wealth, you're trying to become a better person, when people know that they're purposely going to fuck with you, it is what the fuck it is. I forget who said it. But somebody, but it was a quote where somebody said, make your moves in silence. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. Don't say shit or don't put, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you're making a move, don't say nothing until right before it's truly about to pop the fuck off. Because you're putting that shit out there, spirits, demons, whatever you want to call it, the devil, the enemy, whatever. People hear it. People come against you because, hey, a lot of motherfuckers are, are fucking miserable. Move in silence. If y'all if y'all don't get shit else from this video, we going into 2018 in this motherfucker. Move in silence. Okay. 
Now, she mentions how, you know, she cuffed Simone out and whatnot. Now, I don't know if it was editing, but it seemed like Jewel jumped the boat too much. Because because Heavenly did not explain everything. It's not that she just cussed it out, but she came for her spiritual walk. Now, I mean, I do agree that, yes, she needs to walk it. But, I mean, it's one of those where Simone, you ain't, you ain't there either. So, it's, you, you really can't. But, Jewel says that, you know, you can, like, how you challenge a negative emotion. Like, you should not, that shouldn't be your first thing. Like, if you feel that a negative emotion about to come out, take some time. If if it takes two minutes, take two minutes. After having, like, you expect me to be quiet for two minutes. <laughs> Now, me, I just, like, on some real shit, if I feel that I'm about to give more energy to, to, to some shit that I don't feel that I need to, especially if, I, if I'm if I'm in my right mind, I mean, I'm, I'm not fucked up, I'm not drunk or some shit, I'll just shut the fuck down. More often than not, I'm not going to give somebody that satisfaction. I, I, but, I, but what I will give you is silence, the cold shoulder, and, and everything else. And... Dr. Heavily feels that she needs to apologize to Lucy for the comments that she made. Now, Simone and I think her name is Carmen, her sister, uh, her sister comes over. They talk. And, you know, Simone's like, you know, if we don't turn it around, like they're literally like, if we don't turn around, her sister was just like, don't say if, say when. Now, this ain't, like, I don't, I really don't want this to turn into a spirit and soul, because that is not why I'm him. It's not why I'm her. But what I will say is we all know in Proverbs, death in life is in the power of the tongue. Okay, you can either speak death to your life and your situation, or you can speak life. You know, and the fact she's saying, well, if we don't turn around, you're leaning more towards, you know, this shit is going to end. You, it needs to be when we turn this around, but at the same exact time. Now, y'all know I'm Jewish. I'm going to sit here and take y'all to the New Testament because that's where most of y'all is at that follow me. We all, like, you know, New Testament says faith without works is dead. You can't. So even if you say when we turn it around, you can't just say it and not sit here and put forth that work, put forth that effort. But she did say something which I'm just like, hallelujah. She was like, well, we do live in two separate houses. There it is right there. That right there is a big thing. They are in two separate houses, living two separate lives. So hopefully they do something. Get rid of one of the houses, maybe rent it out. I don't know. They need to figure it out. Where we at? And then, <laughs> then her sister is like, do you feel like he loves you? She's like, um, right there. I was fucked up at um. And then she was like, I don't know. And you know what? I don't know either. So, Dr. Jackie meets with Cecil. Now, Dr. Jackie says she is open to hearing what? What the, what, what, Curtis is Curtis, yeah, is open to hearing what Curtis has to say. Given, you know, the uh, forgiveness and shit, ceremony and shit they had back in August, she's open to it. Now, she says her limit is one. She's like, and I think her whole thing is he cheated once. It ain't finna be it. You can ch keep cheating on me and I keep bringing you back one and done. But I guess her whole thing is how can she convey that this was your one time motherfucker tread lightly? I think she's trying to figure that out. And, but she did say that she's happy that, um, damn it, that light is out. That, that light didn't leave. I need somebody head and change that light buzz. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Um, but she's happy that he never blamed her. In his wrongdoing. So she's at least appreciative of that. Um, now, Dr. Jackie says that, you know, men need to say, I love you more. And like I said, there's a lot of men. A lot of us were not that fucking affectionate. It is what it is. And he says that, you know, his parents never said that to each other. And the only <clears throat> person that kind of pushes him to even say it is their young son. I believe his name is Michael. He's the affectionate one, and later on in the episode, Dr. Simone even says that she's not like that, and it's because of Michael that she even says it. So, <clears throat> they they got some hurdles they need to work through. Now, Quiet and Toys, she says that she is resident as honey. 
making us believe she's about to buy a house. Greg calls and Quad wants to send it to voicemail because they had had an argument prior and we didn't get this argument. And the only thing I'll say is I didn't really like this because it seems so one-sided because we didn't hear what had happened before. But uh, Toya pretty much convinces her, do not uh, hang up, do not send a voicemail, answer the death fucking phone call. And, you know, she said that, you know, she's going to be late and she's not going to make dinner. And he said something along the lines of, well, I wasn't expecting you to make dinner or something like that. Like, he was being petty. Buffett was in his feelings. She got mad, hung up the phone on him. Toya got emotional just like, because it's like, okay, it seems like they really have some problems going on. I'm not going to say they don't, but I feel this more she putting 20 on 10. But, again, maybe it's me being a man of me, you know, I don't fucking know. I think she putting 20 on 10 on some real shit. And her, uh, see, I'm off the side and lost myself in a note. And she was just like, if he calls back on the same bullshit, I'm just going to block his number. So she is admitting to the blocking of, you know, numbers and phone calls when he calls. But again, because we didn't hear the prior conversation, we really can't put it into context. So I don't want to judge him, you know, so harshly when we miss some information. What else we got? And then Kwa goes and buys a car. That's the resident that she was talking about. The conversation of, you know, you're not going to tell your husband. She says that, well, he came and bought a car. I didn't get mad because it's his money. I do believe that this is going to turn into something. And she says the car's for her birthday. But I don't, I can't help but think bad and just think that she's doing this purposely to antagonize him. Not that she doesn't want the car, but again. I don't know. So, Damon Jr. comes to the house. Um, he doesn't come home a lot. I ain't mad at shit when I stayed at San Xavier University, which, I mean, you know, if I took public transportation for two hours to get home, I didn't come home every fucking weekend. It is what it is. I ain't mad at him. And she wants him to be a, her intern during the summer months because even though her children are privileged, she wants them to work. I ain't mad at it. So now we have Mariah's party. All the girls are supposed to be wearing white and yellow. Now Contessa is 34. No. No. Contessa says that she lost her mother at age 34 to cancer. So when she was in her 20s, uh, her mother had breast cancer. Um, I don't I don't remember if she said she had the breast removed or not. But 20 years later, it came back and then it spread. So, uh, Miss Renee kind of feels that boy. And when she said that, I had to control myself because I'm just like, okay, y'all not going to give me the crime tonight. Bravo. Okay. Because I had something similar happen. My cousin, um, Yolanda, she had breast cancer and she has two boys. So she went ahead and she, uh, chopped off both breasts and even went through chemo. And we honestly thought that. We had won the battle. It came back so aggressive. It went to her bone, her liver, and her spine. And my mother ended up moving her into what is now my apartment when I go back home to Chicago. And it was mostly because, like, Yolanda was on the south side of Chicago by herself. So, of course, we didn't want nothing to happen to her. And there's no one there to do anything. And where my mother stays, it's at least somebody in the uh, apartment building. So... It like it got to a point where Yolanda li pretty much was fucking skin and bones. Like Yolanda went from being a thick woman to literally like it was hard to see, especially knowing that she lived right upstairs and I was up there with her a lot because that was like the sister that I never had. So it was like to slowly see her withering away. That shit was fucking rough, especially when you know the death actually happened. And I forget what review I talked about. It was a review I did last week about, I didn't know, I think it was the one where I did about uh, Love and Hip Hop went so far. It was talking about his mother at a funeral bringing it down. And I mentioned my cousin Yolanda because at the funeral, my mother, we bump heads a lot because we're both A-type personalities and I have her personality. But it was like at the funeral, it was like we literally fell into each other's arms and we just cried for a hot minute, you know, so. 
that happened. I'm like, okay, bro, well, y'all not gonna have me tearing. And and I just not recently just got done watching. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and be crying on my birthday, okay? But it's my birthday. I can cry if I want to. So Mariah wears blue. I'm just like, and y'all know I like Mariah. She she petty. She starts shit. But I'm just like, damn it. Because it's one of those, like, now you're going to get rid of all the reason to say some shit to you. But yeah, Mariah had to stand out wearing the blue and shit. Miss Renee says, to, oh, I'm sorry. I also forgot to say, Miss Renee was showing her ass, y'all. Miss Renee sat here, is drinking. She even asked for a double because they probably don't put enough liquor in it. She told the girls, when I get mad at her, I call her, what, 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 what? Black doctor bitch. <laughs> also, and look, y'all. People can say what the fuck they want to say about Miss Renee. Miss Renee coming for not the contestant's fucking spot. I'm not finna lie to y'all. And of course, y'all know that is Donnell Jones' mom. Y'all know Donnell Jones is from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, and her mama is ghetto as fuck. She says some shit, but I'm gonna get to it. Like I, like even though it was so fucking embarrassing, and I was embarrassed for contestant, I couldn't help but laugh. So, during the actual party and whatnot, uh, Miss Renee walks up to Mama Lucy. She was like, you are a beautiful chocolate woman. Great compliment, but she just kept going with it. It's just like, okay, this shit is getting fucking uncomfortable. But I holler. I holler. I'm just saying, like, but Miss Renee so damn drunk. Then she over there. So, they had two separate tables, which I think production did that, but... If you know Miss Renee off the chain, she should have Miss Renee at the table with her. She talking about something. And look, and then she forgot to take the tag off of the thing that she bought me. <laughs> and then the it's like, <laughs> I'm sitting over here just like, Miss Renee is a fool. <laughs> her ass is drunk. I holler. And um, they mentioned, I think it was Tori that mentioned, like, why why do you have a plate out for quiet? Because it's Quad's birthday weekend. Uh, Mariah sent the invite, but Quad did not reply. So, you know, it's one of those ways. She, she could have set the plate, but not really put food on it. But, hey, hey, I don't I don't know. I don't know. So, Mariah gets up and is giving out an award. She gives out one award to uh, Toya for being a, uh outstanding stay-at-home mom. And <clears throat> then she had to be shaded. When she was like, you know, and, you know, she has never said anything negative about my mother. And that's a testament of how she was raised. I said back, like, shade. <laughs> Everybody fucking called it. Everybody did. And what the, what the fuck we had? Because I, I, I done lost my place. So then uh, the, the ladies, I'm probably got to share. I seen what the ladies saw about Dr. Jackie and Cecil meeting up. <clears throat> and Dr. Jackie says about her revelation. That's when Simone had said, you know, it's because of Michael that, you know, we even sometimes people say I love you to each other. That was cute. And Toya, um, <clears throat> in here that she was like, well, can I call Dr. David? And she was like, hey, I'm not. <laughs> Y'all, y'all know not to have me don't play about Dr. David. Maybe so. Yeah, I kind of gave that shit all out of sync, but it's okay. It's all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Miss Renee, before this shit kind of ended, Miss Renee was just like, because. I'm sorry, Mariah was like, okay, we're going to go out back. Got my shoes and whatnot. Miss Renee, like, you going to play some house music? And I think she even mentioned that she was from Chicago and shit. I'm just like, well, we do like our house music. We do like now. She we do like the step, too. But I don't think it was it was enough men for all of them to be. Well, actually, women step with each other. They could do some step music. But again, this this is upscale. And they didn't brought Miss Renee ghetto ass <laughs> up in there. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Y'all ain't going to talk bad about Miss Renee. Yeah. God the heavenly goes to apologize to Miss Lucy. And Miss Lucy pretty much said um something along, like along the lines of I'm not there yet. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be godly of me to accept your apology knowing that I'm not there. But we knew she was pretty much looking at her like, bitch, I don't like you. I'm not gonna accept your apology. Get the fuck out of my face. It was that's the 
vibe she was giving off. And Miss Lucy had that motherfucking cane on clutch. But, uh, you know, and it all ended with them, you know, releasing uh, butterflies into the sky. Mariah, heavy foot ass, stepped on one of them butterflies and shit. But that was it. That was the episode. But next week, it's about to go down. And I can't wait. I think that we might actually get married to Madison next week because it what, should come on the 29th. So we should get that. We might even get the households. I'm not sure if we're going to get the households. But I because the households come on on New Year's Eve. So we might not get the households. But we are getting the hip hop motherfucker. So that's it. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for helping me out bring in my birthday. I really appreciate it. Mwah, mwah. And uh, that is all that I have. So um, and that's it. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, next video, if nothing else comes, uh, if I if nothing else comes to me, then the next video is probably gonna be loving hip hop Miami. So if I don't see you guys before, then have a, a happy new year again. Happy, blessed holidays. <clears throat> Use this time to spend time with your family, with the ones you love. And really take this time to be thankful for the fact that you have survived another year. All right. And that's all I got. Because if I keep going, I'm going to start going into, you know, my fucking passion. I'm, I'm going to cry. I ain't crying on my birthday. So that's all I got. Peace. Get the fuck out of here.